Hello year two. I've been missing you lots. I hope you're having fun at home doing all your learning and doing lots of active things outside as well. Um, I thought today that I would read you a story because I've been missing reading to you. So I've brought Sid along to have a listen and I've got Gerard because lots of you met him last week as well. Now as giraffes know I love sloths so my story today is going to be about sloth and I've worn my sloth dungarees just for the occasion so I hope you enjoy it. Snuggled in the dappled warm heart of the Amazon rainforest was an old tree that had been there longer than any of the animals could remember. It was so old its bark was withered and wrinkling and its roots stuck out like they were trying to escape the earth but its arms stretched high above the other trees towards the glowing warmth of the sun. The trees had one heavy drooping branch and hanging underneath that branch lived a very ancient sloth who had been living in that same old tree for her whole life. Her name was Nana Sloth and she was the oldest, slowest animal in the forest. She had been in her tree so long to see all the animals come and go and plants grow and die. Nana Sloth had been hanging from the same branch for so long, lots of animals thought she was a part of a tree itself, like another hanging branch. Her fur was long and tufty and was green from where the plants had started to grow among it. She had three toes on each arm, which she hugged the branch with, and she had big brown eyes, which she gazed around the forest very slowly with. But the other animals laughed at Nana Sloth. Still upside down, Nana Sloth, they would bark and growl and shriek and howl as they went about their daily business. Still staring at the ground, still the wrong way up. But Nana Sloth never answered because she was almost always asleep or was so slow to reply, thinking carefully about her answer, that the animals were gone before she could say anything. But the animal jokes made her feel very sad. Because Nana Sloth lived hanging upside down from her branch, the world that she saw was upside down too. In her upside down world, the plants grew from the sky and animals ran with their feet in the air and the rain fell from below. Out of all the animals, Nana Sloth had one friend, a moth called Herbie, who lived tucked up in the warmth of Nana's tufty fur. They would spend hours every day talking and looking up at the sky from under their branch, all around the forest, upside down at the other animals as they scampered past. Nana Sloth couldn't stop thinking about the other animals' jokes. Oh, Herbie, she would say, what am I meant to do? cried Nana Sloth. I've spent all my life seeing the world the wrong way up. Why can't I see it like everyone else? And Herbie didn't know what to do because Herbie had only ever known Nana Sloth this way up. The other animals all laughed at Nana Sloth because she couldn't see the forest the right way. Look at Nana Sloth, laughed Roger the Armadillo as he shuffled by. She doesn't know whether she's coming or going. The red squirrels ran around in circles underneath her, making her dizzy. And the spider monkeys all bounced around, throwing mangoes at her so she couldn't see which direction they were coming in. Anita the Anteater blew air down her long nose at poor Nana Sloth, so she thought the wind was blowing from the ground. Stop it, Herbie would shout furiously, and he'd fly at the monkeys. And Roger, the armadillo, and the red squirrels, and Anita the anteater, and he'd bat his little moth wings at them. But they would pay no attention and laugh and run off. Before he fluttered back down to set upon Nana Slothy's tuffy fur. Don't worry about them, Nana Sloth, whispered Herbie. We'll find a way for you to see the right way, to pull yourself round the other side of the branch. Nana tried and tried, but she'd always been hanging upside down and her arms were old and tired. I can't, Herbie. My arms are too sore to try moving. Herbie set about trying to pull Nana Sloth the right way up, but try as he might, his little moth wings weren't strong enough and the other animals laughed at him. Everything's still upside down, sighed Nana Sloth sadly. We won't give up yet, said Herbie, as the animals all laughed. Listen here, he shouted, turning to them. How would you like it if your world was upside down? The laughter began to stop and the animals all looked bashful. Mm, how can we help? asked Roger the armadillo. Between them, they came up with a plan. If Nana Sloth could be turned the right way up, if she couldn't be turned the right way up, they'd turn the forest around her. 
The ants went off into the trees and turned the leaves around. The monkeys hung upside down by their tails from the branches. Roger the armadillo flipped onto his back. The beetles and bugs flipped over with the, with the stones and the seeds. And all the animals lay on their backs with their legs waving in the air. It's no good, sighed Nana Sloth miserably. Thank you, everybody, but I can't spend the rest of your lives upside down just for me. The animals all sat glumly and Herbie the moth fluttered down to rest on Nana Sloth's tufty fur. Sorry, Nana Sloth, he said, we did our best. And then a sudden sound of fluttering overhead disturbed them where they all sat. A flock of brightly coloured parrots landed in the branches overhead. Why would you want to see the forest the same way, shouted one. We've got the best view up here. We can see for miles around. See the brightness of the sun and the blue of the sky and the green carpet of the treetops. That's not true, chattered back a monkey. We've got the best view in this rainforest. We see the sunlight coming through the leaves and the whole of the forest floor from a height and the fruit and berries on the trees. No, squeaked a little beetle. I see the best bits of the rainforest. Look at the lines on this leaf and the brightness in this stone and the colour of the earth. There was a pause. Actually, said Nana Sloth, slowly from her upside down position in the oldest tree in the forest. Actually, this view isn't bad. The animals turned to look at her. Actually, everything looks pretty wonderful from here. I get to see the raindrops falling up and the trees growing down and the sunlight pouring in beneath me from the trees. And the animals realised that perhaps everyone had a different view of the rainforest, but maybe they all saw something wonderful in a different way. And that it was possible that if it might be a shame that if they all saw it the same way anyway, that they'd all miss out. So Nana Sloth and the other animals decided that even though they all lived in the same rainforest, it didn't mean they have to know it in the same way. From now on, instead of laughing at Nana Sloth, they would stop and listen to talk about the way she saw the world and in turn describe the world that they saw to her. And from her happiest place in the world, hanging upside down from the same old drooping branch in the amazing ancient tree of the forest, with Herbie nestled cosily in her tufty fur, Nana saw the world in all kinds of new ways.